My name is Mark Stevenson. Okay, where were you born, Mark? I was born in, in Albemarle. I was born in Albemarle, the Stanley County Hospital. And I spent most of my childhood in at Pfeiffer College, Meisenheimer, North Carolina, playing around in, on Pfeiffer Place. Yes, yes, I was born in Albemarle, and um, my parents had uh, been living at Pfeiffer for two years when I came along. Now, what did your father do? He was the physics professor at Pfeiffer. Oh, okay. They hired him to create the physics department. Nice, I didn't know that. So I brought him in from Duke. What did your mother do? My mother was an obstetrics nurse at well, eventually at Stanley County Hospital for many years. She wow. delivered many of the babies in Albemarle, Stanley County. Um, we're always artistic. You like to draw. You um, wanted to be a baseball player. And then maybe a little yeah. later, you wanted to be a singer. <laughs> Is that correct? Well, the house, our house was full of music. My, my sister has a degree in music, and my mom and dad sang, and I always thought my mother's voice sounded like um, Leontine Price's voice, actually. Mm -hmm. when, people, when she let loose, that's what it sounded like. Wow. And um, uh, there was always music in our house, from opera to musical theater to classical to lots of Beatles. Yeah. So, <laughs> lots of Beatles. And so, um, um, it was, after I broke my kneecap, my sister said uh, to me, you know, you, you, you can't play baseball the rest of your life, so why don't you come and get in the choir at Pfeiffer? I was already singing with her at the house, um, but not out in public. Yeah. And so, I did, and it was quite enjoyable, and I mainly stuck with that, and so um, it grew, it grew, and I did have some encouragement here and there. Yeah. And now, how far did you take singing? I was very serious about it. I was very serious about it. Um, I, I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to be, um, a voice type that I probably wasn't at what? the time. I wanted to, to sing roles that I don't think I, I, I realized many, many years later I was not capable of doing that and uh, didn't have, just didn't have it, uh, but could do a lot of other things. Oh, do you still sing? I do, I do, I love singing. I, 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 I wish I had more opportunities someplace, just, just to get up and do something. Yeah. And um, I'm, I, I feel better about my singing today than I ever have, so really? uh, yeah. Well, what makes you feel so, feel so confident about it? <laughs> I think I've learned how to sing. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've gotten out of my way. I've gotten out of my own way and have allowed my voice to just be what it is. Does your wife help you at all? Actually, yes, she does. Um, she's a voice teacher, has, and just the fact of not singing for a long time uh, and then just, I have nothing else to lose, let's do this. 
And she said, she would say, try to sing with this, more of this, and your little, little tricks here and there, and they worked very well. And it's freed me up. It's gotten me out of the, my, my own way, so. Hmm. Um, Good. Yeah. How long have you been married? Um, we've been married uh, 2012, so uh, May 6, 2012, seven years. Wow. Have any children? We have, uh, we have two children, James and Emma. Wonderful, wonderful. It is. Are they showing any signs of great talent? Yes. Okay. They are natural, Emma is a natural performer. James is an incredible drawer. Emma can draw as well, but Emma just naturally puts on a show and she has, she's got the chops. Okay. And James loves guitar and playing um, and drawing. He's a he's a he's a deep thinker. Good, good. Well, yeah, got, got them on a good start, and they got wonderful parents to guide them. That's wonderful. <laughs> Let's talk now. We've kind of got a background on you. Let's um, move back into your art. Okay. Um, so when did you go from drawing? being the guy who draws to the guy who paints. How did you get away mm. from baseball or singing? How did you get there? You, there were kind of three things we covered in your background. Yes. You know, wonderful things. And you're also an engineer, but how did you get into painting? Well, actually, um, other than doodling here and there and drawing directors and drawing people sitting around me, in choir or whatever. <laughs> um, I didn't do a lot of drawing or art. I didn't take it seriously, whatever that means, mm -hmm. um, for, for quite a while. And then after, um, when I was actually doing some auditioning, uh, after I had, I sung at Des Moines Metro Opera summer of 94 as an apprentice artist. and was doing some auditioning that fall and was getting sort of disenchanted with it. Uh -huh. And I thought to myself one night, I was watching Jim Henson, American Masters. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh my gosh, he's, he's having a great time. And so I started, I went out the next day, I thought, I've got to start drawing again. What did I used to do without anyone telling me and what can I do at midnight with, without bothering anybody? And so uh, I went out the next day and bought real drawing tools. And uh, it began, it started to creep. I started to draw, take it more seriously, work at it a little bit more. By December, I bought some uh, really cheapy watercolors because I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. I, I walked into the art store and I said, sort of set me up, and set me up. I don't know how to, what do you, what do you got? They gave me a Sumi E brush uh -huh. and six tubes of cheap paint yeah. and some paper. Yeah. And it grew. it grew, it grew rather exponentially over the next year or so. This is the mid nineties? This was 94, 95. 94, 95. Into 96. Okay, about where were you living when this, all this was going on? I was living in Greensboro. I had moved to Greensboro to get to go to school there and was still living in Greensboro. Um, and in, you know, they, Greensboro has a nice little art community I ended up, I discovered. But um, living there and working for uh, some of my former engineering firms as just to pay the rent and so I could audition and uh, fly to New York um, every now and then to audition for something. And so um, my apartment in Greensboro soon became a, a watercolor factory. <laughs> it was a mess, but it was a great mess. Now you were living in Greensboro, but you would go to New York to audition? Yes. For yes. singing? For, for singing, right. for a, an, an other apprentice programs, or just usually at that, that time. So, uh, uh, but, and then I got up there and I thought, oh, this is pretty good. And I thought, hmm, 
I know people who live here, you know, <laughs> so that helped me, get, that helped uh, to know people who live there, and yeah. so, um, so one day, I get a call from uh, uh, a Des Moines Metro Opera colleague who said they, they had a, a room in their apartment was coming available, and if I wanted it, I needed to let them know within a few days. <laughs> oh my, that was a... One of the hardest decisions of my life, mm -hmm. but um, I thought I'll give it a year, and so I packed up my, dismantled my life in Greensboro, and moved to New York. <laughs> mm. So, uh, is that where you develop then the the painting and the style you have now, and entrenched you into art? Yeah, it it it, it I can almost say yes to that because. Um, I saw, at the Met, I saw a big uh, Winslow Homer exhibit, and then I saw a uh, uh, Camille Corot uh, exhibit. And that was in the winter of 97, uh, in February 97 or so, March 97. And I, I thought, I've got to start dabbling in, uh, in oil. <laughs> And so, so I went out and bought black, white, and burnt sienna, and some boards, and some brushes. And my room in my apartment began to be a studio. And I kept, and I kept bringing materials in. <laughs> it just got to be a, a hodgepodge of things. But yeah, I, just, I, I was wanting to paint, paint all kinds of things. And so you stayed up there for a while, and you, you've, come, you've come back to North Carolina, and you, you do eventually get married, and you start working again and yes. have kids, and, but you, yes. you continue to paint. Like, I know you only as a painter. I don't know you as a singer or, or even as an engineer, because that's my only, really, contact mm. with you as a painter. <laughs> well, I will say the, the last thing I was able to do vocally was I, I was very privileged to get the role of Javert in the uh, Salisbury Symphonies, Piedmont Players production of uh, Le Miserable in mm -hmm. fall of 2014. Good, yeah. And that was great. That was a great show. Yeah. So. What is your style? How would you characterize yourself? Oh my. Um, that's hard. I, I, I um, we all, I think all people who specialize in portraiture idolize probably a handful, from Sargent to uh, Zari, um, <laughs> Zeroya, excuse me, <laughs> I was mixing two names. Uh, Rembrandt was my first blow me away. Mm -hmm. I want to paint like Rembrandt, you know, sort of thing. Okay. I, I see an interesting face and I want to paint it. I really do. I've, I've gotten, I've stopped people at events and said, can I paint you? And they say, yeah. <laughs> so, and I just try to capture who they are and capture an emotion and just usually my, it's just here's someone who is very interesting and you want to capture this face or this look and um, I, I just try to paint. I don't, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. how, if I get it, I get it, whatever the outcome is, so. Um, yeah, I get yeah. that. Do you, now, you went from watercolor to oil. Uh, do you stay mostly in oil now? Yeah, these days with, with uh, I don't have a, a lot of time to, to venture around except what I'm, my projects I'm on uh -huh. with a family and. Right. Uh, but watercolor is a very, to me is a very meditative. So is oil painting, but uh, watercolor is something you I just sit and mm -hmm. work on, like you know, just yeah. meditative thing. Okay. Uh, it's a great medium. What do you want to do now? What is your goal now, or do you have one? Oh. Uh, we talked a lot about the past, but what, what do you want to do now? What's you now? Oh gosh, um, that's a huge 
question to try to answer in a, in a sentence or two. Um, be the best I can be, whatever that means. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've always tried to find um, my own self in whatever I do. All painters try to paint like someone they admire, and you can learn from that, but it's, you need to, to just do. Yeah. Take a risk. Yeah. Take risks. So, and it's hard to take, it's, it's a hard thing to take risks. But you do, you, a little incrementally. I, I, I still think acting is a fabulous thing. I see actors, young actors, um, and I'm, I'm amazed at their um, ability to just let go. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work, but let go. Yeah. And, um, oh gosh, um, they're just, life is, is full of so many different things. I, I've never been able to imagine myself doing just one thing all the time. And uh, I would love to be able to, to just exp have, have a little bit of freedom to try this, try that, yeah. and experience uh, what I know are the great rewards of these many different things. Yeah. So. It sounds to me like you've been given a lot of gifts. A lot of great opportunities and gifts. Well, um, I do. I know that uh, it's. I don't know about gifts or not, but it takes a lot of work to succeed in anything. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of work. It's you just don't do it. You just don't do it. So yeah. um, you've got to take batting practice every day. Mm -hmm.